Welcome to the season five mid-season patch tier list. I haven't made one of these in a while, just because like I don't know. It hasn't really interested me that much recently, but uh, I think this patch isn't the worst. I actually think that there was some good stuff with it. Some of it, not all of it. Some of it, but uh, I figured I might as well make one because I've been playing a little bit of ranked. I had to get top 100 back. Uh, it only took 25 wins, which is a whole different conversation, but. Let's get started, shall we? Actually, can we take a moment to appreciate how much, like, the tank roster has started to catch up? Like, supports get, like, you know, support still needs a little bit more work. Still need, like, one or two more characters to get a little bit closer, but... Uh, the, the gap between tank characters to pick and DPS characters to pick has definitely gotten a lot smaller over time, and, uh... Don't really realize it until way later, so... Definitely good, just good stuff to see on the horizon. Anyways, starting off, let's not do Zarya, actually. Um, let's do Ramatra, who I think is arguably one of the best tanks. Um, but I'm going to keep him out of S just for now. I'm going to put him in A. I think he's a very solid A. Um, the reason I think that he's an A, not an S, is because there's definitely a lot of maps where Ramatra doesn't work, like Gibraltar, Kambani. Um, but on the maps where he does work, like your King's Row, King Row, and some of the push maps, like it's not even the best tank to always play. Um, actually, on push, Winston is really, really good. Um, so where Ramatra is strong, he's not even the best pick. So that's why, to me, I think that he's more of an A tier, where he's good almost everywhere. It will be a solid pick, but if you're trying to be at the top level, like the most meta picks, it's not quite there. Um, but on your lower ranks, uh, a lot of people play Ryan. You can kind of bully Ryans on Ramatra. However, uh, a good Ryan can still outplay a Ramatra in ranked. In coordinated play, it's a little different, but this is gonna be mostly a ranked tier list. It will bump, it will bounce in between like high level play and metal rank play, like interchangeably, but mostly just like overall what is best. Uh, next up, we're gonna have Zarya. Um, I don't think Zarya is that bad. I, I think Zarya is very much slept on right now. Um, I think Zarya can be good against Orisa, especially. Uh, can be good against Junker Queen, who Junker Queen's really good. Um, it can be good against Diva, where Diva is. You're getting a good amount of playtime because Winston's so strong. Um, and even in some of the duels, like the Reinhardt duels, or the, sorry, not the Reinhardt duels, the Brawl duels, Zarya's pretty good if you're playing ranked and you have, like, the teammates that are playing, like, May Sombra, right? Like, May Sombra's really strong, um, but the problem is you don't have much damage and you don't have coordination. Uh, so by getting the extra damage that Zarya pumps out, you're actually farm crazy numbers and it looks cool and you have fun, which is really important, but also you can perform pretty well. And so for that, I actually think she slept on quite a bit and is pretty good. Uh, Junker Queen. Junker Queen, I'm actually gonna get a little bit silly and I'm gonna throw Junker Queen in the A category as well. Uh, low A at that, but get me out of this. I don't think she's as good as Ramatra, but she's still very good in so many other aspects where uh, she has good self-sustain now with the carnage changes and the knife changes. She's still pretty threatening to characters like Winston, who's really good. Um, we saw a lot of Joker Queen in World Cup. We saw a lot of Ramacha in World Cup. We saw a lot of Winston in World Cup. The patch notes didn't really change any of that. Um, the only problem with Joker Queen is I think most metal rank players aren't going to be able to pick up Joker Queen and dominate. It's just not going to happen. Um, the, the amount of accuracy is required on knife throws and comboing through your carnages and not being stupid with them because hitting your carnage is how you survive so if you get anti during it or slept or booped away or whip shot away or any of the 9 million cc's that are in the game now like the hindering uh you're basically toast um so it, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of game sense to play joker queen um so for metal ranks i don't think she's gonna be that good so if you agree with you disagree with that one that's probably why uh but otherwise she's still pretty good all right, I haven't actually settled on a on a, where I want to put her yet, um, but ironically, I think Arissa's like arguably B to A tier. I actually think I might even throw her in the A tier. 
Uh, for those who don't know, Rissa got a buff for her Fortify. She went from 40 to 50%. She is so tanky. So tanky. So, I don't know if you guys remember an old spectating I did back at the start of Overwatch 2. Stop shooting the horse. Since then, all the tanks kind of got nerfed a bunch. Um, and became a lot weaker. So shooting the tank actually became the new strat. Uh, but Arissa now goes back to where she was before. And is so strong that wow, shooting the horse is a bad idea. Digits. Thank you for the 10 months, buddy. Appreciate it. It's kind of a bad idea again. Uh, but basically the way you play Arissa is anti-brawl. So the whole point of Arissa comps is just to shut down Brawl, basically buy as much time as possible for your DPS uh, and supports to make plays. And during that se sequence of CC and surviving, you've bought maybe 10 to 15 seconds in the fight. Once Arissa runs out of buttons to press, she dies. But if you press all your buttons well, you typically can win fights versus Brawl. So I think she's really good and kind of slept on at the moment. Um, I bet I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see more Arissa play um, against teams in high level play that are really good at Brawl. Uh, and in ranked, you'll probably see a lot of Arissa, especially in the middle rank. So I'm going to give her pretty high. I'm going to say Doomfist is like, it depends. Like, see, <clears throat> if you're good with Doomfist, he can easily be a B or an A tier. But he's so niche and so hard to play, he's really not good. Like, the amount of mechanical skill in game sense required to play this character game in and game out is ridiculous. It's not healthy for the game. Um, good Doomfists still dominate and they're hilariously fun to watch and they're, they're high flying and they're sick and they're insanely good and they're impressive and it just makes no sense how they get value. Uh, but I don't know if I really like that character in its design is so complicated to play that like 99% of the player base can't play the character you know and then you have all the Doomfist players playing say, players saying my character is so weak uh, I'm sure you've seen a bajillion I'm sure there's like zebra and quake dawn threads and dissertations and college level theses is about the the fucking stair slam of Doomfist and you know they, they write like novels so it's just like actual just should have went to Harvard for doomology type of deal you shouldn't have to write all that shit though about a character to work you know like I know it's fun and makes a niche and cool but like once that disconnect happens you're not the character can never be good because if you make the character good he's gonna be broken for the people that are really good but you can't make him bad because if you make him bad, nobody plays him, and the people that actually do love to play the character are barely gonna get by. So it's in this middle ground of, he's okay if you're really good, but if you don't play him, he's gonna suck. And I think that's really bad for Doom players, but I don't see a way out of it. Winston is an easy S. Uh, tons of Winston play all through World Cup, even after the patch. Patch doesn't really change anything for that. Um, Tracer's still really good, Sombra's still really good. Uh, Kiri's technically got a buff, so even better. Uh, Lucia's still really good. Winton is just kind of the OP tank of Overwatch 2. And I don't even want to use the word OP, I think. Because I don't think Winston's OP. Like, if you ask somebody right now, do you think Winston's OP? I think the answer is no. I think he just, he's just makes the most sense as a 5v5 based character coming from Overwatch 1 um, in his niche, right? Like, the two dive tanks were always Winston and D.Va. And D.Va's doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You know, like, she gets the unbelievably long defense matrix, but if she's not defense matrixing, then there's nothing. But what Winston does, he jumps in, puts down a stationary and he's 600 HP bubble, and then your Tracer and Saw Umbra play inside the bubble, and they know at all times, as long as I'm in this bubble, I'm safe. I can't get shot. It's not up to my D.Va letting go of defense matrix you know what i mean so winston's really strong right now but i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think that just shows that some of the flanking characters are, are really strong i think that's what it is uh sigma i'd give a solid b definitely has had a bit of a follow from grace ever since removing his one shot combo um of the rock left click uh, but still very good on maps like junker town or circuit royale uh still has his niche i wouldn't say bad but definitely not like a hey what are we should what should we run here let's go sigma type of deal it's like you're typically gonna say something else uh, D.Va. I throw D.Va in the A tier. Uh, I think D.Va, in, when Winston is good, D.Va's gonna be good and ranked. And when D.Va is good, Winston's gonna be not as good, but probably is being played at the same time. Because uh, 
in team play, Winston will, I think, always be better than D.Va, but D.Va is just going to have way more burst damage, way more frag potential, if that makes sense. So, in your ranked games, when you know, there's a really good Winston on the enemy team, the other tank typically goes D.Va. So, because of that, D.Va ends up being really good. Ball? Uh, Ball's kind of fallen off a bit. Um, I wouldn't say he's bad, but because Sombra is so good now, uh, <laughs> well, actually, it's not just Sombra. Let's let's, let's talk. Uh, it's now Sleep Dart. It's now Cast Need. It's now May Freeze, which slows you down plus Wall. Uh, there's uh, Oop, Whip Shot plus Briggs Ult Stun. Sombra. Tracer's really good against Ball because Tracer just chases Ball around the map. That's basically how you play Tracer against Ball, is you just harass the Ball the entire time. Um, uh, characters like Soldier, you're typically not going to be able to, to run them down. They can, typically can just get away and play with their team and get support. And plus, like, he got also got a healing buff, so Soldier's pretty decent against Ball now. Uh, Sim turrets, I mean, we're at 10 now. And then I think that's pretty much it. If you want to talk like other team, like there's Diva's really good against Ball, and you know you could argue Junker Queen is really good against Ball because like her shout gives everyone's extra HP plus the knife. Uh, so there goes that. And you have Zarya, which I wouldn't say Zarya is good against Ball, but like if you're just talking about like everything in general, there's a lot of things that eat the little hamster alive right now. Uh, so even putting in B tier, I'm kind of a little bit hesitant. He might even be more of a C tier character right now. Yeah, yeah, I think I don't I don't ever go ball unless it's to come back fast. I'm gonna put ball in the seat tier actually. Uh hog. Uh, let's just let's just make it easy. Let's put him in the D tier. Hog is not good. Uh I will say there's definitely places Hog can kinda work. It's weird. It makes no sense, but it's in places like control where everyone just plays like So basically what control is at high level play at this point is like almost team deathmatch, but King of the Hill style, and if you have really, really, like, pesky teams where your team is running, like, Farah Mercy, Tracer slash Sombra, and then you're running your other DPS or your other support is, like, a Kiriko or something and just flanking Perma, and it's like, well, you don't have support as a tank that entire game. You just go hog and basically play AFK and, and farm your ult because it's so easy to farm your ults now with hog, and then you have the eight second whole hog, which is actually good. Uh, you end up playing Hog to just play for ult, which is really shitty. But they buffed his ult so much that that's just how you play Hog. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of dumb. Uh, but yeah, let's let's not let's not make any assumptions. Hog is bad. Uh, he needs a rework. I'm like Ryan. Uh, in ranked, probably a B. In scrim and like in team play, maybe even an A. Um, but. Right now, at least since this most recent patch, uh, I'd probably throw Ryan in the B tier at best. Still, I can make him work. I mean, that's just me. I know there's another a couple obviously insanely good Ryan players who can make it work, but uh, let me tell you, when you get that game versus like the, you know, Zen, Ram, you know, and <laughs> like you're just like, oh man, I'm not having fun. You'll know why Ryan doesn't feel good, at least in uh, regular ranked. But, hey, in the 5v5 team Q mode, I'll tell you, Ryan felt really good. And that's why I think Ryan gets more play in, like, Overwatch League or World Cup stuff than you see in ranked now. Because you need that extra synergy that you're not going to get in ranked nowadays. So, this, I think this is a pretty good one for the tank tier list. Um, I'm a little bit biased and I'm thinking about that, but I don't think he's that good. So, let's put him in the B. I think this is a solid tier list for it. Actually, now I think about Arissa's probably here too. No, nah, no, nah, we're gonna keep Arissa in there. Okay, not gonna second guess myself with this one. Soldier, I think Soldier's good. I think Soldier's pretty good. I think he's a lot better now. One of the biggest things of Overwatch is consistency of DPS. Like, that's why you don't see Widow every game. Even when Widow was super strong, consistency is over pick potential 90% of the time. Um. Certain maps like Junkertown, you need the Widow, because even that one pick is gonna open up the whole point. Uh, but for most game modes, consistency is key, and Soldier now does consistently good damage and survives well on his own, which is very valuable. Easy A. 
gosh. Um, I'm going to throw Ash in the A category as well. Easy A. Very good still. Um, gets a Mercy Pocket a lot. That's when it's scary. Uh, I wouldn't say you play Ash as much as Soldier. Like, she's not as flexible. But on the maps where Ash is good, that's where you'll know Ash is strong. And Bob is still really good. Ash has been good for a while, always been sneaky good. The Mercy Pocket just kind of like tips it over the edge. Um, honestly, all the hitscan are pretty good right now. So I'm going to say easy A. Bastion. Uh, this is an easy B tier for Bastion. Bastion uh, isn't that good. It isn't very good in like coordinated play, but like what's we're talking mostly ladder here. Uh, if you're playing in like the metal ranks, I'll teach you how to play Bastion. Want to learn how to play Bastion? I'll teach you how to play Bastion and against Bastion. Listen closely. The way you play Bastion is you sit and you wait until the enemy team engages you, and then you pop your shift and blow the tank over. Just, just explode them. Don't focus on anything else. Just blow up the tank. That's how you play Bastion. How do you play against Bastion? That's easy as well. You bait the shift. You play really aggressive to the point where you know you can play escape, like just further enough to force them to go turret form and then peace, leave. Just go as far away as you can, around a corner, around the, the bend, leave. Peek back, look, peek back, look. Is it over? W key, immediately. Because once Bastion uses his shift, he's useless. But when Bastion uses his shift well, very scary character. I'm gonna say B. Uh, Cass. I'm gonna give Cass a solid B. Um, the reason I'm not gonna put Cass higher is because Dive is really strong right now. And even though the hinder is really annoying and really sucks, uh, Cass is a dive target. So. Honestly, Flashbang would probably be better than Hinder uh, because it would actually like give you a second to survive. Um, but what now? What Hinder is? It's just it's more. It doesn't even do its job. Like it's not anti-dive. It's just like it's just kind of annoyingly you like annoying CC. That uh, how do I put this? It's not anti-dive. It's just anti-character that came near you, right? And so if you play dive and you go like Sombra Trace or Winston and you just all in the cast, he's dead. He's gonna die. Uh, yeah, someone will probably get hindered on the way out, but it's not gonna stop them, right? But this cast is still really good. I would actually argue maybe even putting cast into A tier, maybe? Uh, let's, uh, we'll come back to this one. We'll come back. Uh, Echo. Echo's really good. Echo's really good right now. Depends on the map, though. I'm gonna throw Echo in A tier. You know what? I'm gonna bump Ash down to B tier. I'm gonna throw Echo in A tier because I don't think of these two as the same tier. Echo's pretty good. Echo got a ton of play in World Cup. Um, she just builds her ult so damn quick now. She builds her ult so damn quick. And it's not as useful as it used to be, but really good character. He's, I'm gonna give that a nice A. Uh, Genji. You know, I think he's not all that bad right now. He's not great, but he's not that bad. I think I'd give him a nice B. Solid B. Extra ammo actually helped out. Solid B. Not really much else to talk about there. Dive is strong. Genji's a dive character. You don't play Sombra. Genji's a good alternative. Or Sombra Genji, that's a classic. Hanzo. Um... I think Hans is pretty good. I think Hans is pretty good. I think Hans is an easy A. With Widow being nerfed, your new one tap uh, one tapper is kind of Hanzo. Um, plus, with Rush being good, it's good pressure. It's a good pressure character with Storm Arrow um, onto like aggressive comps. Plus, playing Hans is just Hanzo. You just kind of spam a choke and wait for something to happen. So. I give him an easy A. 
Junkrat. I don't think Junkrat's that good, but I don't think he's that bad either. I'd give him a solid B. I think it depends on who you ask. I think it depends on who you ask. Some people could say Junkrat's broken. Some people say he's really good. Uh, but I think he's very much in the middle. Um, you don't see a ton of Junkrat right now. But the when you do see Junkrat players, they're pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's a niche. It's a niche pick right now. Very much a niche pick. May... Depends again. May, if you're playing Rush, can easily be A tier. Um, but, like, Dive is really good, so you're not playing a ton of May. But I also think May is really good. Not as good, but still really good. It's hard because it depends. It depends so much. In comps, in, on maps where May is good, it's easy A. But if we're talking all the time, it's probably B. I'm gonna leave it B for now. Farah. Um. Farah's pretty good. I don't think she's like that crazy right now. But definitely strong. I'd throw it an easy B. Counterable. Um. Very, very strong though. But like, you know what I mean? Like, not something you play everywhere. Plus, like, Farah's kind of a selfish character. Real talk. That's what it is. Fair is a selfish character. You need to have almost guaranteed a pocket to play the character. So when you play Farah comps, you have to balance your whole team around the Farah. And if your Farah is not good, well, then you're shit out of luck. So the only person who ends up having a ton of fun in those comps is the Farah player. You know what I mean? I would say, uh, I'd say a solid B. Reaper. You know, low key, I'd say very high B, low A. Very high B, low A. Oh, this is such a hard one. Because he's good against a lot of the stuff that's being run, right? Like, he's good against Winston, and he's good into Rush, and versus Rush. What? Is he that good of a character? Ranked meta very much right now is not team coordinated. Uh, but Reaper's still scary. I'm gonna give Reaper the A. I think he's good. Probably underrated in ladder. That's that's what I'm gonna go with. I think he's very much underrated in meta. Or sorry, not meta. In ladder, probably could get a lot more play, um, but isn't getting as much right now. And I can't figure out why. I think he's good. Uh, Sojourn's easy B. Got some good buffs. Um, she's much stronger now. Uh, the Mercy Pocket Sojourn is uh, starting to pop up once again. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Sombra, easy S tier. Don't really have to talk about it, I don't think. Uh, Sombra, Sombra has been insane. Uh, who would have thought that uh, inv perma invisible invisibility is kind of OP? Uh, basically, people just go in your back line, they ping whoever they're going to go for. And one of three things happens. If it's a tank, they solo EMP them and delete them. Uh, if it's a backline, well, they typically pick someone who's not mobile, like a Zen or a Cass or something like that. Uh, or three, if it's all mobile, then they just pick someone and just go all in anyways and go for the hack. Sombra's just insane. So, it is what it is. Also, I can't believe nobody really threw a fit going into Rush 2 about EMP doing 40% of your health. Like, nobody thought of, like nobody thought that was crazy. Now I think about it, like... Damn. We were all, like, on some serious copium. Symmetra! Uh, Symmetra got some nice buffs. Um, she can now two-tap you. I think Symmetra is big and scary. Uh, easy A-tier. Easy A-tier character now. Uh, on, on certain maps, S-tier immediately. Very, very, very spooky. Uh, <laughs> you go into a really... <laughs> You know, Torb. Uh, I actually think the Torb changes were not a net buff or nerf. I think it just kind of, kind of like, you know what? Actually, maybe even a hot take. I think it was a bit of a nerf. I think it was the Torb was a bit of a nerf. Like his reload thing is kind of insane, and now like, I don't know, like his actual damage is kind of nuts, but. Sim kept the most important part of her turrets, which was the slow. Uh, and Torb's turret was never about anything other than damage, so his damage just got straight up nerfed. Um, 
So you know what? I'm actually I'm actually gonna go with the C tier on that one. I don't think he's as good. I don't think he's as good now. Okay, Tracer. Uh, let's get that out of the way. Easy S tier. Uh, Sombra Tracer Winston is the core of what you would say is the meta comps at the moment. Really, really good. Uh, Widowmaker. Uh, Widow got nerfed really hard. Uh, but you still see really good Widowmaker. Like, if you get, like, those games, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you get that game with those really good Widowmakers. But there's a problem now. Sombra's really good. Because of that, even though the Widow nerfs, I don't really think did much. Dive being really strong and Sombra having Perma and Viz just basically able to sneak up behind a Widow and just ruin her whole week. I said gives her a nice easy B. She's still very good, just unfortunately not in meta. On to supports, Life Weaver. Yo, is it disrespectful to Hog to say Life Weaver's in the same category as Hog? I feel like that's low key disrespectful. I'm gonna put him back in the F. Uh, I actually thought for a minute we weren't gonna have an F tier character, uh, but now that I think about it, I don't think Life Weaver's as good as Hog. I think Hog is better. There is actually zero reason, this much, zero reason to pick Life Weaver. He's awful. He does so much healing now. Who cares? Healing doesn't, healing numbers, sorry, raw healing does not mean shit in this game. Like, unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, but if you are someone who subscribes to the line of thinking that doing high amounts of damage and high amounts of healing is how to win Overwatch, we would all be playing Moira, Anna, Junkrat, Reaper, uh, what? Well, Reinhardt, you know what I mean? Like, no, that's not how the game works, guys. There's so much more utility that he doesn't bring. His pedal platform's really not that useful. Um, and his pull, his most his useful part, ends up being a troll thing half the time, you know? So, uh, I think Gavin was in Emonk's chat earlier and said Life Weaver has a pretty good win rate in low elo, probably because of the healing. Well, that's probably because in low elo, you're just sitting there pumping the tank all day long. I've talked about this. Like, when people come to my chat and go, Flash, you would never survive in gold. I go, yes, I would. Dude, you know how easy it would be to survive in gold? Surviving in gold would be so much easier than, than playing in GM. You know why? Because I would have 10 times more resources. I would just know that my Ana is trying to stick her rifle as far up my butt as it can physically go. But in GM, I know my Ana's going for kills. You know what I mean? Like, gotta be a little more safe. So I'm not that surprised by it, but the character's really bad. Needs a full rework. It does not work, unfortunately. That's just my opinion, the truth. Mercy, oh man, poor Mercy. I swear, Mercy has been the talk of the town recently. And uh, you know what? Hey, the Mercy players keep an Overwatch in business, apparently, because one, there was the Lifeguard Mercy skin, and two, every other day, there's a new tweet going around, going viral. It's got 16 million views, and everyone's going, ah, like, guys, stop, like, please. Uh, B tier, easy, not great, uh, not bad. Definitely good in cir circumstances. Uh, good pocket character. Basically DPS enabler. That's Mercy. Nothing else to talk about there. Ana, easy S tier. Uh, one of the best characters in the game. Definitely one of the best supports in the game. Actually, uh, we're gonna get there in a second. All the supports are really, <laughs> really, really good. Uh, you actually might get you might get a little bit annoyed here in a second. Uh, but Ana is extremely good. So much utility. Super fun to play. Everyone loves Ana. Same category, I would throw Kiriko. Kiriko's just as good as Ana, just to provide something different, more more, more mobility. Have the cleanse um, to bail out your teammates as opposed to nano bailing them out, slash sleep dart bailing them out. Kiriko's really, 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 really good. Uh, Baptiste is really good. Uh, I wouldn't throw him in the same category as Ana and Kiriko. Brings a little bit less to the fight, but brings more damage. Uh, way more more damage and more survivability. He's basically got three health pools now because he has his original health pool. And if he gets below 50 HP and then pops his shift, he gets 150 healing. Is it 100 or 150? I think if he's below half health and then he uses his shift, he gets double the healing. Um, so it goes right back up. Oh, it is 150. Okay. So if he's below 50 HP, he gets 150 healing. 
Um, so there goes from almost killing him to full health bar. And if you bring his health bar down again, he throws lamp. So now you have to take time to kill the lamp. And if you're only a 1v1 versus him, if you're playing a character like, I don't know, Genji, it probably takes like either one full left click or two right clicks to kill the lamp. In that time, the support self heal has started. He's already jumped back in the air. So now you have to track him back up. And during the self heal, he's already back up to over half HP. He just, he has so many health bars that in a 1v1, he's almost a better version of Soldier 76. So, uh, Bap is really good. Really, really good. Speaking of really, really good, let's throw her in there. Brig, easy S tier. Her win rate has skyrocketed in high level play since the buffs. I'm not gonna say it, but she was already good months ago. The meta just didn't favor her. Now we have a good Brig. Lots of favorable meta. That's just what happens. That's how Overwatch works. This is why we don't overbuff characters who aren't performing really well or performing, performing top tier because the meta will always come back around. That's how Overwatch has worked for years. It's not a personal attack. You shouldn't identify your entire personality with an Overwatch hero. That is not healthy. But break easy S tier, very good. Lucio, I would also throw in the easy S tier. Extremely, extremely, really good. And there's not that many good Lucio players anymore, at least in ladder. Everyone plays Zen, Brig, Kiriana. Uh, but when you get those really good Lucio players and you just W key into the enemy team, uh, there's very few things people can do. There's very few things people can do at the moment. Lucio, easy S tier, depending on what kind of comps you're running, one of the best characters in the game at the moment. Um, we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna get real real trippy today. And I'm gonna throw Moira in the A tier, actually. Moira's really good. She's good. She's actually really good. Moira Lucio goes hard. If you're talking ranked, she's very good. She's good in team play, and she's good in solo queue. Moira's really good. Her mobility's insane. Basically, what's happened at this point is now that Dive is really strong, supports need some survivability. And Ana, if you're not landing your, your cooldowns, isn't that good. Like, you're gonna fail. Playing Kiriko, you have a lot more abilities. But if you're not doing damage on Kiriko, you're only playing half the character. You play Moira, you get a little bit of both. You get a little, you get more more survivability than Ana, but you get more damage than Kiriko, and you easily start to be able to really pump those numbers. And I have games where my, my Moira out damages and out heals everyone in the lobby. Everyone in the in the lobby, it's crazy. Very good ranked character. All right, let's wrap this up. Zenyatta. Uh, it depends. Zenyatta's really good though. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a top tier pick, but honestly, the nerfs made him not. They didn't make him worse. They made him worse. But, it's not why Zen was strong. What made Zen strong was the amount of value you get by leaving Discord on a tank AFK. What the nerfs did is they promoted that playstyle by lowering his ability to Discord targets further away. It was not a nerf that he needed. I actually think the nerfs for Zen are bad. I think that he should not have gotten a, a ranged nerf on his Discord. If anything, the 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 two seconds to 1.5 to break LOS, I think that's pretty good. But the range one just makes it so you can't basically Discord anything else. Does Kiri cleanse Discord? You should never be cleansing someone of Discord Orb. That is a massive waste of the cooldown. Um, that's just like a side effect, if anything. The point is though, Zen is really good on certain maps, in certain play styles. Um, but, if you're playing against this, right here, you're dead. You're you're just, it's over, it's GG. Um, but if you're playing against this, right here, this row, he fits in perfectly. So that's my logic. This row, he does not survive, he doesn't hang out. But look what we got here, we already got the tank, we've already got the DPS, we've already got all the supports. 
But in the next row is like the next most viable comps, your rush comps, and then your counter Winston comps. And he fits in just perfect. That's where he is. He will shit on Rhyme, will shit on Zarya, Zarya less so. Uh, doesn't really shit on Sigma, but like the, the pressure damage to his shield now, plus he can't one-shot combo, it actually makes him a little bit more scary. Uh, plus the Discord just makes it so he takes more damage, but Sigma's pretty good against Zen, so like, you know, argument falls apart, apart there a little bit. But I have to put him in the eighth tier, uh, because he just he fits with all of these so well, or against these so well. Doesn't hang at the S tier level, um, so keep that in mind. But the point is, though, at the end of the day, yeah, Sigma's one shot is gone. At the end of the day, though, Zen's nerfs really didn't make him bet like any more uh, fun to play against. It just made the character worse for no reason uh, because it didn't solve the problem. Like it doesn't solve the problem. You know what I mean? Like the problem is how much value you get on a tank. So like I would propose, I'm not saying that this should happen. I would propose that one of three things should happen. One, it should ramp down over time. So if like you leave it on a tank, you, it immediately gives you 25%, and then after, say, three seconds, it goes to 20%, or let's say three or five, like let's say let's say two seconds, right? After two seconds, it goes to, 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 to 20%, and then, or no, let's say three, three, 20%, and then after five seconds, it goes to 15%, and then beyond that, it just, you know what I mean? Like it just, it stays that way. That way, you have to just constantly be reapplying it and not have to worry about it as much, but going LOS of it, that doesn't make it a huge nerf. I think that the probably way to be to do it um, is my, how honest Sleep Dart applies now and how uh, you only get slept for 3.5 seconds. I think it would probably have to be some sort of similar rework where if you're on, if your Zen Discord's a tank, they don't take 25% damage, they now take... 20 or what I think in Overwatch is the break point is 15. I think 15 is the high. And I'm not saying Zen should get it. I think all damage amplifications, Window, Mercy, Zen, etc., should not go any higher than 15%. Because beyond 15%, it becomes too unreasonable to uh calculate breakpoints for every character in the game. It's it's just unreasonable at that point. So point is though, I think Zen needs something very specific for that interaction. Other than that, though. Character's fine. And there it is. There's your season five mid-season patch tier list.